Now, an exclusive interview, Republican Senator from North Dakota, uh, Senator John Hoven is with us this morning in Washington, sitting on the Senate Appropriations Committee, as well as the Senate Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Coalition. He is also the former governor of North Dakota. Sir, good to have you on the program, Senator. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Maria. You, your reaction to the president's plan announced yesterday. Yeah, it's a good proposal, and we're going to put it on the floor this week in the Senate. And I sincerely hope that uh, our colleagues from across the aisle will work with us on this. Let's get this passed. Let's uh, end the uh, shutdown as well as fund border security. All right, so you are going to bring this to the floor on Tuesday. Do you believe mm -hmm. you'll have the votes? You know, I think it may take some work, but I think we can get there. Uh, look, we've got provisions in here that the Democrats have indicated they very much want, whether it's DACA or humanitarian assistance or technology at the border points of, of entry. These are all things that they've said they want in the deal. We're putting them out there. President laid it out last night, and, and they need to work with us. And, and many of the things here were part of the Bridge Act, which we know mm -hmm. that they voted on before and they voted yes. Yeah. So this upcoming week, the Senate will take up the bill that extends TPS, temporary protected status, uh, right. for, for DACA recipients, as well as the, the, the uh, overall DACA recipients uh, help, funds humanitarian aid for migrants, and obviously ends the shutdown. What do you believe your colleagues on the left will have a problem with in terms of that list? Well, look, these are things that our colleagues have voted for before. In addition, we'll include the appropriations bills, which are bipartisan and they have supported, as well as the supplementals for disaster assistance to help with the hurricanes we had in, uh, in uh, Florida and Georgia with the fires in California, the earthquake we had up in Alaska. So, look, this is, it's very compelling. These are things that, that they've wanted, that they've promised to their constituents. They need to work with, and I get there may be some back and forth, uh, but they need to work with us now to get it done, and let's get it done this week. Well, I mean, it, it includes border security funding, the president's $5.7 right. billion. Right. Is that what is going to be the non-starter, that it includes money for border security? Look, we need to not only fund the government, all the things we've described before, the things that the uh, Democrats want, but we've got to have border security, which includes that funding for a while. And that's something that they have voted for before. That is just common sense part of national security, border security. Okay, so, so let me ask you what the justification would be in terms of not providing the money for border security, given that all of these things have already been things that they voted on. And frankly, uh, there's already a border wall in Nancy Pelosi's state, which we're going to talk about with Congresswoman Debbie Dingell uh, right after uh, we uh, discuss this. So, so tell me your thinking in terms of what your uh, colleagues uh, will push back on. Well, that's it. This is just basic common sense. First, it's just part of national security. Second, they voted for it before. We have existing border wall, border fence, whatever you want to call it. They fund, Democrats have funded it for previous presidents, including President Obama. There, there's no reason to turn this down, particularly now when we're reaching out and compromising on things that they want. Well, you have look, you're looking to fund the government until at least September. You're on the Appropriations Committee. Mm -hmm. Senator, tell us where the priorities are for this government in terms of allocating capital? Well, you've seen it. The, the, you know, I saw earlier you're talking about the stock market going up. That's because the economy is so strong. We ended the year with more than 3% growth. That, that comes because we've cut taxes and because we've reduced the regulatory burden. So if we can continue to focus on these fundamentals to get our economy to grow and then make sure we do the things that people want, find ways uh, to, to reduce costs in terms of the overall cost of government to have strong security support, our military, our law enforcement, you know, do the things, address the health care issues, bring down the cost of prescription drugs. Those are the kind of fundamentals that help our people in their everyday lives across the country. When, when, when do you start making reigning in spending a priority? You know, you well, and your colleagues just uh, voted and, and passed the, the farm bill, $867 billion over the next 10 years. It's a, it's a head scratcher that you would agree to $867 billion farm bill, and yet you can't find $5.7 billion for border security. 
Well, we absolutely can and need to find the funding for board screen, no question about it. We actually saved money over the last number of years in the farm bill. And again, if we can hold the line on spending overall, keep it from growing, find savings where we can, and keep our economy growing, that's how you reduce the debt and deficit. So what's your view in terms of the impact of this shutdown on the economy? Well, the, you know, obviously it will have some negative effect, but the, the key is the underlying fundamentals, which I just talked about a minute ago. As long as we keep, you know, those fundamentals strong in terms of good economic policy and, and keep that job growth growing, the economy will grow. And, and you're seeing wage growth, which is so important because then people feel it right in their pocket. So, so do you believe it's about one-tenth of a percent impact per week? Uh, as a result of, of the government shutdown? I mean, I recognize it hasn't really hit the private sector yet, but when that happens, that would have an impact on broad economic growth, right? It, it will have an impact. Again, that's why let's, we're putting this bill on the floor this right. week. Let's get it done, and that'll take care of it. All right, so you think you'll have the votes necessary next week on Tuesday or Wednesday? It's going to take some work, but this is a compelling package. We're offering compromise. Uh, the Democrats need to join with us now and when, work with us to get this work, done. When you say work, what does that mean, Senator? What do you mean it's going to take work? You mean you're going to try well, to... There may be yeah. there may be some provisions in there that they may want to adjust or add or change a little bit, but at the end of the day, we've got to continue to work to find that compromise and get it done. And, and this package that the president has put forward, and we've worked with them on to do it, is a good package. We can get to a, a resolution and the border shutdown make sure, or excuse me, end the uh, government shutdown, make sure we have uh, border funding for security and cover a lot of priorities that Democrats have said they very much want to get done. Yeah, speaking of security, you introduced this week a bipartisan resolution uh, supporting the modernization and maintenance of the country's intercontinental ballistic missile fleet. That's ICBM right. fleet. Tell us about it. What do you... Well, it follows the uh, administration's missile defense review. It's part of defending our country, making sure that as our adversaries increase their capabilities, both in terms of their offensive weapons and their missile defense systems, that we can defeat them. We always have to have the technological edge so that we can not only defend our country, but keep our troops safe. When, when they're out there defending us, we need to make sure that they have superiority in terms of technology and weapon systems. And, and the other nuclear uh, countries, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, are they pursuing advancements in their weaponry? Exactly right. And that's why we have to stay ahead of them, both in our ICBM and our ABM anti-ballistic or missile defense systems. It's both. Mm -hmm. So in, in terms of allocating capital toward defense, is that in jeopardy in any way as you look to fund the government till September? That has to be an absolute pri priority. I mean, that's what we're talking about when we talk about border security, supporting our milita military, supporting, uh, uh, you know, our law enforcement. Those are fundamentals to keeping our country and our people safe. That's got to be an absolute priority. Senator, before you go, let me end where I began, and, and, and that is on this, pro on this plan from the president. What do you mm -hmm. expect the Republicans are going to have to give on in order to get your colleagues on the left to, to vote for this? You know, again, I, I get that uh, Speaker Pelosi and uh, Minority Leader Schumer have come out and said, oh, that, you know, it's not good enough. I get that. But the fundamentals are there. So there may be some adjustments in some of these provisions we've talked about. But all the elements are there to get to an agreement. People want us to get to an agreement now and get this done. Senator, it's good to have you on the program this morning. We will be watching the developments on Tuesday this upcoming week. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Senator John Hoven there. President Trump pitching a new deal to end the government shutdown and get his border wall. The president welcoming America's newest citizens during an Oval Office naturalization ceremony before announcing his compromise. Our plan includes the following. $800 million in urgent humanitarian assistance. $805 million for drug detection technology to help secure our ports of entry. An additional 2,750 border agents and law enforcement professionals. 75 new immigration judge teams to reduce the court backlog of, believe it or not, almost 900,000 cases. Our plan includes critical measures to protect migrant children from exploitation and abuse, 
The plan includes $5.7 billion for a strategic deployment of physical barriers, or a wall. This is not a 2,000-mile concrete structure from sea to sea. These are steel barriers in high-priority locations. In order to build the trust and goodwill necessary to begin real immigration reform, there are two more elements to my plan. Number one is three years of legislative relief for 700,000 DACA recipients brought here unlawfully by their parents at a young age many years ago. Secondly, our proposal provides a three-year extension of Temporary Protected Status, or TPS. Now with a new deal on the table, the ball totally in the Democrats' court. Here to help us break it all down, Fox News national correspondent Ed Henry, Fox News national security strategist Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Republican National Committee spokeswoman Kaylee McEnany, and former congressman and Fox News contributor Jason Chaffetz. Ed, we begin with you. Mm -hmm. This totally changes the dynamic now in the Capitol. How has this shifted responsibility? Yeah. Let me tell you what the president said and then tell you what he really meant. And that's the key. He's trying to put Nancy Pelosi on defense. Uh, the, it was basically message, I care. Yeah, I want to talk about the wall. I want to talk about the barrier. But I'm going to talk about humanitarian aid. He's going to help DACA recipients. 700,000 DACA recipients basically get three years of protection. They get to stay in the country while they figure all this out. TPS means protected status for about 300,000 people who are in this country now who could be deported, who are from Honduras, Guatemala, places like that. So those are the details. In exchange, he wants the $5.7 billion for a wall, a barrier, a fence, whatever you want to call it. Here's what he didn't say and, and is the real key. He wants to start in the Senate and not the House. Right. He thinks maybe he can get 60 votes. You now have a stronger Republican majority. 53 Republican senators, and you have moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin. Can he get to 60 votes on a deal similar to this and then put the pressure on Nancy Pelosi? She's trying to drive things now that she's in the House and say, look, I want to reopen the government, but I don't want to give you any money for the wall. Let's put it in the Senate court. Let's put it in the president's court. But has court. Nancy He's said something it. already? Isn't she already throwing she's cold already water shot on it this down before he, he even gave the speech? Right. And what she's complaining about is that the DACA recipients, for example, will not get a path to citizenship. Right. Well, OK, why did the president leave that out? It's a negotiating. It's the art of the deal, folks, because if he gave them everything now, then there would be there would be no compromise. So the idea is right. they come back and say, we'll give you three billion for the wall or something like that. And then he's says, okay, I'll give you a path to citizenship for the DACA recipient. So look, the point is that the president, going back to the holidays, has been saying, I'm at the White House, I'm ready to negotiate. Pelosi's been in Hawaii, she was wanted to go on a foreign trip. So he grounded Air Pelosi first Air to get Pelosi. back on offense, okay? Right. And now, part two of this strategy from the president, from the White House, is to take the, uh, the initiative, go on offense by saying, I'm driving the legislative train through the Senate, not through the House. Right. All right. So let's bring in the rest of the guys. If you look at this from a very conservative perspective, and let's say, Dr. Gorka, you see the president offering, um, I wouldn't, it's not even amnesty because these people are not going to get voting rights. They're not going to get anything like that. You're basically just extending the status quo on dreamers and these temporary protected status people just for a few more years. I don't see anything that Republicans could vote against. Do you? No, I mean, Ann, Ann Coulter is already tweeting hysterically that we didn't vote for amnesty. This has nothing to do with amnesty. Maybe she's trying to sell books or something. It is simply a grace period, right. a three-year, very compassionate grace period. It is exactly as Ed said. The tables have turned because now, if Nancy doesn't accept this deal, which is for just zero point. Uh, zero one of the federal budget, that's what the five billion dollars is, then she will paint herself, herself and all of the Democrats as utterly uncompassionate. Right. And those because are crumbs. Those said? are just those are merely crumbs, right. to put it in right. some terms to, to, that the, the speaker word. can understand. Um, Kaylee, th he's offering, I think, 230 miles of additional border wall and those are the steel slats that you can see through that give increased visibility and he's also doing a lot of other things for humanitarian reasons as ed pointed out do you see the possibility of the senate getting sixty votes on this i think it's a slam dunk 
Oh, I think this is a slam dunk in the Senate. Of course, she'll have to have a few Democrats come over. We've padded our Republican majority. But I think you're right. Look, this is a very fair compromise. And it's everything, literally everything, or at least a lot of what Democrats have asked for and have talked about supporting. And let's just get to the point here with regard to the House and Nancy Pelosi. Democrats are fakers. Democrats are posers. And the reason I say that is they said they want DACA legalization. Well, this is a great first step toward that. They say that they wanted a barrier on the southern border just five years ago when they voted on it in the Gang of Eight bill. Now they don't. Uh, they've posed and they've faked their way. This is the, the plan they've always wanted, and here they are rejecting it. Right. So right now you've had Nancy Pelosi try to leave the country. You've had other people in the House go to Puerto Rico and take their shirts off and hang out during the shutdown. I don't see how the media, as biased as they are, Jason, how they can paint th this president and the Republican Party as anything other than willing to compromise and negotiate. No, I think Donald Trump has played that just right. He's been reasonable. He's been tempered. He showed compassion. And he also indicated that if we can get this deal done, that on a, on a weekly basis, he would invite them in in a bipartisan way to figure out the rest of immigration. I don't know what you can ask right. for. And I hope every single federal worker who's not getting a check, watch that video and then listen to Nancy and Chuck and tell us who is reaching out their hand, who's being reasonable, and who's actually trying to solve this problem. That's a great point because he said this is just the beginning. And, you know, they can address chain migration, lottery, the asylum loopholes, all that other stuff. Maybe just invite them over and serve some Whoppers and Big Macs. That's <laughs>